Ramps are one of the more important elements of platformers. It allows you to move vertically without actually making the player jump. In this video, I'll show you how to do it in Pygame. Just a disclaimer though, this video is one of my more advanced videos. I will be going over the code, but I won't be writing it during the video like I do in my other videos. This is my game Super Potato Bra, and I, as you can see here, I've got ramps. I decided to use this game as a demonstration. The player's Y position smoothly adjusts as I go up and down the ramps. There's also ramps going in the other direction over here. This is the type of effect that I'll show you how to achieve using Pi a game in this video. One issue I just noticed uh, today in Super Potato Bra is that the feet don't actually touch the ramp if you're going up the ramp. Only when you're going down do the feet touch the ramp. Adjusting the player's image to fit the ramp is something that's fairly easy to implement. You can just check if it, the player is on the ramp and then adjust the image accordingly. Although it's a lot of work. So now I'll go over the concept of how this stuff works. So in this video, I'll be specifically covering ramps and platformers because that's a little bit different than the slanted walls in, say, a top-down game. So here's the main difference. In a platformer, you'll be going down from gravity, but you will not move to the right from colliding with the ramp. You'll typically just stand on the ramp wherever you landed. It's just a sloped surface, so you don't slide down it normally. However, in a top-down game, you can see that the player would likely go into the ramp and be pushed up into the left as they were walking up. This type of behavior is specific to uh, top-down types of games. In platformers, it's very different. You typically want the player to stand still on the ramp, even though they're being pushed against it. So this effect is pretty easy to achieve. You just make it so that when the player hits this ramp, their feet touch the pixels that make up the edge of the ramp. The question now is how do you calculate where those pixels are? It's actually some pretty simple stuff, but it does depend on the type of ramp you have. So let's consider this ramp. You can calculate the edge of the ramp using the equation y equals h minus x, where y is the vertical position of the player relative to the ramp, x is the horizontal position of the player relative to the ramp, and h is the height of the ramp. This ramp has a square bounding box, so its width and height are equal. So if its width is 80, its height is also 80. So if you take this point that's right here that I've drawn, and, and I found that x equals 40, you can find the height of that position by just subtracting the x position from the width of, or the height of the tile. So 80 minus 40 equals 40, and we know that this point right here is y equals 40. So you can use that to set the player's position when they collide with this ramp. This ramp is very similar, it's just flipped in the other direction, and the equation for finding the edge is just y equals x. And this ramp on the right is a bit different. It's not as sharp of a ramp. The width is twice the height, and you can find that the position of the edge can be found with y equals one half of x. Most of the ramp math is just finding the edge of the ramp for a given position. And the math you do in general will change with the type of ramp you're doing. With ramps in general, you just consider the behavior you want, figure out what you need to know to get the collisions, and uh, adjust the entity's position accordingly when they collide with the uh, ramp. In this video, I'll be covering 45 degree ramps that just basically have a square bounding box. And I will only be covering right and left ramps. There are, are of course, also upside down ramps and stuff. Say if I were to take this and then flip it upside down like this. Those are easy to implement once you understand what you're doing. So now let's take a look at the code. All right, in this project, I've got just a basic grip that has some basic platformer elements. It's got all the input stuff down here for left and right and jumping and its tiles are specified with a position type and their ramp state. I'm using the state of zero as none. One is a right ramp where as you go to the right it gets higher and then two is a left ramp. Using those tiles I generated a sample map. It's just got a row, a row of red tiles on the bottom and a little bit of extra stuff to mess around with. So yeah, this is just the level. And then I create the player. The player is just a very simple object. It's got position, color, rect. It's 25 by 50. And by the way, the tile size is 50 as defined up here. 
and it's used throughout everything. Vertical momentum, this is just for gravity. And then here's the move function is where all the ramp stuff is. So the move function takes in a list that contains the movement on the x-axis and the y-axis. If you want to understand how I do typical collisions, you should take a look at my two other videos I did on this topic. I'll leave a link to them in the description. The move function is also past the tiles. The tiles are split up based on whether or not they're a ramp. Remember th that the non-ramps are defined as zero in the ramp attribute of that object. So if t.ramp is zero, it's a normal tile. And the number zero evaluates to false, so I can put not ramp right here, and I can get a list of all the non-ramps. And then this creates a list with all the ramps. This is just the normal collision stuff. Check out those other videos if you're not sure how to do that. And then now we get down to the ramps. So the hitbox is just generated with the rect, or the bounding box of the ramp itself. So this is a square. So even though it says hitbox, it's really the hitbox of the whole square that contains the ramp. So just because it hits the hitbox does not mean it actually hit the ramp. The hitbox is defined with using the function tile rect, which just creates a rect with the information of the tile's position and the tile's size. So the first step with ramps in this specific case is to calculate the relative x position. And the relative x position can be found fairly easily. Uh, in this situation here, it's the relative x position based on the player's left edge, since that's how the, uh, the x-coordinate of a rect works. So where is the player's left edge relative to this ramp? The next step is to calculate where the what, what the height should be at, at the, the relative x for that ramp, as you saw in the thing I drew in MS Paint earlier. And this uses two of the equations from earlier, although this one's slightly modified. So for the right ramp, this is just y equals x, so it's height equals relative x, and there's this extra part right here where it says plus self direct dot width. And as you can see this from this comment right here, it goes by the player's right edge, because you don't want to be going by the player's left edge when you're on a ramp that ri uh, rises to the right. And then in the second case, it's just y equals, well, width or height, minus x. So this is just the left ramp, and it calculates the edge position for that. I added some constraints here, because if you change the system with how this works, so if you go off of like the center of the player's position instead of the edges, you can run into some problems if the player is on the edge of the ramp. Basically, you could get like a negative position height or a position height that's higher than the tile size itself because the spot is being measured by is outside of the ramp. So you always want to make sure this is within the proper ranges, so from zero to tile size. This value right here should technically be like tile height or something in the event you've got a long tile or whatever. There are multiple ways you can implement the uh, less steep ramps, and you might want to change this value depending on how you do that. So the target Y is where the player should be teleported to, basically. And this adjustment to the player's Y is what creates the illusion of there being a physical object there. So this is set to the Y position of the hitbox of the ramp. So the top of the, t of the ramp tile plus the tile size of the ramp, so that means the bo this right here means the bottom of the tile, and then you subtract how far up that section of the ramp is. So you're set, the target Y is the actual position of the edge of the ramp in the game space, because before we were working with relative positions here. And right here, this sets it to a, an actual position in the game space. And now you can check if the player's bottom is past the target Y, which is past that position in the game space. So you know by this point that the player has already collided with the hitbox, but you don't know if the player has actually collided with the ramp. That's why you need this. If the player's Y is past that position, you know that it's actually inside the ramp because that's the edge of the ramp. And if that's the case, you can adjust the player's height by setting the bottom of the player's rect to the target Y, and then this is just a position update to update the position based on 
the rect position. And then of course, I've got my typical collision types bottom equals true. That's just something so they can keep track of what type of collisions occurred. That's pretty much it. Let's take a look at this script in action. All right, so here we go. We've got the level I created, well, hard-coded, kind of. And as you can see, there's a couple of ramps here and some other tiles. And there's something I'd like to point out specifically with the system I wrote, which is why there's this one ramp right here that leads to nothing. So first of all, as you can see, the ramps work as that you would expect. Well, kind of. You might expect it to show the player a little bit lower on the y-axis here which you can easily do if you want. If you go by the center of the position, or the player's position, you can get it to work a little bit differently, but there's other issues you have to deal with if you do that. Yeah, as you can see, this works as expected. And here's the thing I wanted to show you. I never added a way to collide with the other sides of the ramp properly. So if I hit this, it just teleports me up to the top. It's a little bit more complicated to add that. Um, it's not too hard to figure out. I may do a video on how to add that if people are interested, but in general, it's not super important to add that because in most cases, you will be using ramps that are connected with other tiles on the sides like this. Normally you don't have these sides exposed. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, you can go to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions there where I can answer them very quickly. Although I do still answer the questions in the comments to this video, I'll just take a little bit longer. If you're interested in my other projects, you can check out my Twitter. If you're interested in Super Potato Bra, I'll leave a link to that in the description. It comes with the source code too, so you can take a look at that if you're interested in the other features there. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.